you know, when women have low testosterone, um, they perceive stress through a uh, different lens, not as good of a lens. And it's more of like you feel defeated in the face of stress right away. I'm not advocating for supra-physiological levels of testosterone. I know in some journals, the American Family Practitioner um, that's published by the American Medical Association has an article in there talking about testosterone replacement therapy. And it's kind of, it's not that old. It's been around for a little bit. But uh, they talk about using supra-physiological doses of testosterone in some cases. I want you to know, I don't advocate for that. I don't agree with that. I believe using physiological dosing in women is very effective, very important. What does that do? It helps improve your natural natural feminine muscle tone that you're supposed to have. It improves insulin sensitivity, absolutely. And it improves the way you perceive stress, which means you're not gonna have the same cortisol surges. See how this stuff works? When done right, you're like creating a symphony and you're approaching the whole of the woman. And that's who you are. You're the whole woman. You're not just, you're not just the self-silencing. You're not just the side effect of the self-silencing. You're a whole person. There's a lot to you. And we can use all of that together to come together to create something beautiful. So yeah, testosterone's part of it. Um, thyroid support, you know, when you're under chronic stress, as I mentioned in the previous episode, chronic stress really does impact the way your thyroid is metabolized. So your body makes T4 at the gland. T4 is the precursor. Okay, that's fine. It does its thing. It goes into circulation. But in circulation, it gets converted into something called T3. T3 is the active hormone that does the work, or triiodothyronine. That does the work. The enzyme that converts it over is called 5 prime diiodinase. 5 prime diiodinase. Now, if you are under stress, that enzyme 5 prime diiodinase doesn't work very well. It turns into something called 5 diiodinase. It loses the prime, right? So it's 5 diiodinase, not 5 prime. What does that do? It makes something called reverse T3, which is an imposter T3. It's a version of T3 that doesn't work. It's a blank, <laughs> so to speak. And that in circulation goes around and, and it doesn't do anything. It blocks the thyroid receptor. Basically, in effect, slows everything down. So when your patient presents to a clinic with chronic stress, weight gain, and, and, and they have that issue with self-silencing, I run my lab. I'm going to run a, a T3, a free T3, a free T4, TSH, of course. But I'm also run reverse T3. And I'll see if they're converting their T4 into reverse T3 to high of a rate then I prescribe around that. What do I do for that conversion? How do I improve it? Zinc, selenium, sometimes ashwagandha and schisandra. And people are like, that's hippie, Brennan. That's not real medicine, Dr. McCarthy. Uh, yeah, but my labs prove it. I'm not going to put fat on that uh, protocol. I, I don't agree with that. I don't like protocols where I can't prove it did what it's doing. 